Elon Musk called hydrogen powered vehicles mind bogglingly stupid. He would say that, though, wouldn't he, with most of his fortune tied into electric cars with Tesla? In the next few minutes, I'm going to completely skip out the boring chemistry bits and focus on the so what? How does that impact you? I'm going to show you how hydrogen is going to be one of the biggest sources of green energy in the next years to come. So, yes, that glass of water on your table could very well power that flight to Dubai in the future. This is powered. All right, before I begin though, I have to address one thing. As you can see here, YouTube tells me that 20% of you only have subscribed to my channel when you're watching this. Really doesn't take a long time. Please, please, please just press that subscribe button at the bottom as you're watching this. It will be really helpful. Growing up, Driving a car with the biggest, best sounding engine, even fire from the exhaust, that was goals. Now though, that's changed, it's almost criminal now. And to be fair, quite rightly so, when we think about the environment. When it comes to powering an engine without burning fossil fuels, there's really only two main options. There's fuel cells for hydrogen powered cars, and there's batteries. But cutting out the chemistry between how both of them are generating electricity and powering your engine, let's focus on the main actual difference to you about driving an electric car versus driving a hydrogen car. Hydrogen is very energy dense. What that means is that you can pack a lot of energy in a very small space. When it comes to cars, that means you can add a bigger, a longer range without actually adding much weight to the car. When it comes to electric cars though, the longer range you wanna, uh, you wanna have for the car, the bigger the battery, and therefore the heavier the battery you need to put into the car. And therefore, the heavier the car becomes. A heavier car means more energy needed to actually push it around, and then a full loop cycle back, you need more batteries. And therefore, at a certain point, there is no use adding a bigger, heavier battery because you're not actually getting that um, range that you're looking for. And so the only viable option there is getting actually better battery technology, which is not currently on the horizon. The other difference when it comes to hydrogen and electric cars is the refueling time. As I've mentioned in previous videos, recharging your car at home, you know, six hours at re refueling stations, even with fast chargers, about 20, 30 minutes. But when it comes to hydrogen cars though, Good news, about five minutes. Therefore, when it comes to the main differences for hydrogen and electric cars, hydrogen means that you can have longer ranges without adding the weight and also refuel for faster times, five minutes. Therefore, looks like we found the green energy we wanted to replace petrol and diesel. Does that mean that Elon Musk is definitely completely wrong and has managed to fool a whole industry? Well, not quite. There's a reason why there's so many charging stations propping up across the world and why there's so many different types of uh, electric cars coming up. And it's not just due to Elon Musk's marketing success. The simple way to think about this is that no single energy source will be used to power everything in the world in the future. Battery power will be used in everyday cars, buses, and even cranes. Yes, cranes, and there's a specific reason for that. Whilst hydrogen will be used in other areas, and I will touch upon that as well. But before I do that, let me explain why I think electric cars will be run on batteries in the future. Looking, in, looking at the UK, there's only really two models of hydrogen cars at the moment. There's the Toyota Mirai or the Hyundai Nexo. And both are quite significantly more expensive than electric cars, and electric cars are already quite expensive. And if you want to try your luck on the second-hand market, looking at Autotrader, there's only one hydrogen car available at the moment. And even if production of hydrogen cars increases and therefore the price of them start coming down due to mass production, there comes another problem. And that's the actual refueling of them. Hydrogen power is actually a lot more expensive than recharging with straight electric. And actually eight times more expensive, bringing the cost of it almost the same as petrol and diesel. Your Hyundai Nexo needs about 6.5 kg of hydrogen. And at a current price, that's between 60 to 90 pounds for about 414 miles. You can easily pay a fraction of that with a petrol or diesel. And there lies the main issue with hydrogen power and why there's only really 13 refueling stations in the whole of UK. So that's quite expensive, right? So before you go off and start selling water, let me explain to you why it's so expensive. Whilst the power for electric cars can simply come from the grid into your home, power socket or a station, it's not as easy when it comes to hydrogen. Although you might think there's water everywhere, Hydrogen itself isn't readily available and needs to be extracted from water. 
After being extracted, it needs to be stored, transported, all the way until it gets to your car. But the losses at each of those stages amount to only about a quarter of the amount of hydrogen that was supposed to come to your car in the first place. Therefore, the efficiency is only at 25%. When it comes to electric cars, though, they're 75% efficient. And so when you add on the profit that a company needs to make when they're sending hydrogen to you, you're left with an unbelievably high price which puts off anyone really. And although you can actually produce hydrogen on site, and actually that's how the car and refueling stations are doing at the moment, there's still inefficiencies that come from the fact that you have to actually transport electricity to the station itself to produce the hydrogen. And also it's not really cheap to, bu to build sites that can produce hydrogen in the first place. The other reason is even if you do happen to live near one of the 13 refueling stations across the UK, it's still an errand. Even if it does take five minutes for you to go and refuel your hydrogen cars, no one likes to do it. No one wants to go out of their way when they come out in the morning to go and refuel their car. They'd much rather go to bed at night, plugging their phone in to recharge, and as well knowing that their car is plugged in, waking up in the morning and having a phone that's fully charged, as well as a car that's fully charged. And with everyday cars as possible. I mean, the famous number is that a car is parked 90% of the time. You have plenty of time to, to park your car and recharge it. And the average person really only does like 50 to 100 miles. So really, where are you going that you need to recharge every so often? So this is the point where everyone would literally bash hydrogen and side with our friend Musk. But this is where I actually differ. There are areas, as I've mentioned, where hydrogen makes more sense than battery. And hear me out because this is really important now. Hydrogen will be crucial for some, not all, some heavy duty vehicles. Take trucks and lorries, for example. The whole business model of it is to transport packed trucks with loads 24 seven across the country. Every single second spent on the road and every inch of space within that vault affects how much money these guys are making. Therefore, when petrol and diesel eventually gets banned and you put huge batteries inside these trucks to make them electric, not only will you get very angry tr truckers because you're making them stop for 20 to 30 minutes every time they want to recharge, you're actually taking up a lot of space within those lorries which could have been used to make revenue. Especially when you think about the lifestyle of these truck drivers, you know, some of them are driving 700 miles a day, sometimes in tandem as well. One is driving, the other one is sleeping. So every single second that you make them stop is so valuable. But this is where hydrogen becomes more realistic because all they have to do is literally come to a refueling station, a refuel with hydrogen for in under five minutes, and then off they go with long ranges. All of that without polluting the earth and abiding by the law that's when it becomes really realis realistic for them. And even for planes, it starts making sense because how can you have huge, heavy batteries being put onto planes where you're trying to put passengers on there as well, weight is very important. There's no way you're going to get big, long distances covered with electric planes. And I look forward to when Elon Musk is actually able to do that, if he's able to do that. But hydrogen isn't the answer to all heavy duty vehicles. And that's why I said some. There's actually some heavy duty vehicles where it makes sense to have electric. For example, yes, cranes, because you can have them recharge overnight and then in the morning they're ready to use. So hydrogen really isn't for everything. So there you have it, guys. I hope I've made it very clear to you in very basic terms what is the difference between cars powered by hydrogen and cars powered by batteries. And hopefully I've portrayed a vision of what this future world could look like. And let's end by making a small prayer for this poor chap on Auto Trader who needs to sell his hydrogen car. And also the poor chap who's actually going to buy and only have 13 stations across the UK to refuel at. The world is changing. Don't be left behind. Subscribe and I'll see you very soon on the next one.